Okay, we're going to take a look at Down syndrome and non-disjunction. You should have learned about meiosis already and be able to understand how to recognize Down syndrome from actually looking at a karyogram. The practice of karyotyping produces a karyogram, which you can actually study, and you should have seen that in another video or have already studied that part of the syllabus already. So if you look at these two diagrams, can you tell where non-disjunction is happening? Which diagram or which location? locations of each diagram are actually showing where non-disjunction is happening. So in both of these situations, you have meiosis happening to form uh, sperm cells or egg cells. And then in this particular case, we're looking at meiosis 1, and then we're looking at meiosis 2 with the second division as well too. And in both of these cases, you can see that we're ending up with chromosomes not going uh, not splitting up the way they're supposed to. And it can happen in the first part here in meiosis 1, in the first meiotic division, or it can happen in the second part during the second meiotic division as well too. But either way, you should know that if you're looking at a karyogram, it's the 21st chromosome somehow that forgets to uh, or doesn't divide properly, and so you end up with an extra copy. It's called trisomy 21, and this should be review for you as well too. So we need to link this into actual data and be able to look at how often uh, Down syndrome actually happens. And there's a strong correlation. You actually see a pattern going up with mother's age and the chance of a Down syndrome baby. The thing that's kind of weird about this is when you hear people talk about it, this is giving you an example of how by presenting statistics in different ways, you can either show the real story or you can really mislead people. So if you look at this chance here, so for a mother who's 25 years old, the chance of a Down syndrome baby is 1 in 1,250 births. And you can see by the time the woman reaches the age of 40, we're talking about 1 in 100 births. So between 30 and 35, you can see the chance. So when people talk about this, they say the chance of getting a Down syndrome baby between 30 and 35, when you're 35, is double, around double, right? 1 in 1,000 versus 1 in 500 about is going to be about double. But we're still talking about in 1,000 births, there's only 1. In 400 births, there's only 1. But you can see by the age of 45, the chance of getting a Down syndrome baby actually increases significantly. There's different things that parents can do to actually check that this is the case. And what the person, what the parents decide to do with that, it's pretty much up to the parents. It's an ethical question, a moral question as well too. But you can definitely spend a lot of time preparing yourselves and your future and your family for knowing that your child is going to have Down syndrome if that's one of the choices that you decide to go with. So the point of this video is kind of to link uh, this idea of meiosis and the formation of these actual egg cells and sperm cells. So actually the cause could come from the egg cell and it could come from the sperm cell. More often than not, it comes from the egg cells because the eggs have been in the woman's body for a very long time, whereas sperm cells are made new. A lot of mistakes can happen in the production of sperm cells, but if the eggs have been in the woman's body as she's been as she's increasing in age, she gets exposed to more potential things that can cause DNA mutation and damage as well too. So linking everything together, there's a lot of topics that are linked together here. There's reproduction, there's meiosis, there's genetics, there's health, uh, and there's disease as well too, and also statistics. So think about how you are grouping your studies and big ideas together to help you get a full big picture of what you're studying in biology.